It's Wednesday the 2nd of December, I'm Nita Newman and I'm interviewing John Porter about his apprenticeship at Chance Brothers as an 18 year old between September 1961 and 1966. So, when did you, where did you grow up John? Well I was born in London, spent the first two years of my life in London and then at the end of the war um, we moved to Birmingham. So what? Um, so after school, what led you to working at, at Chance Brothers? Well, I, I looked at several places for um, for engineering apprenticeships. The Chance Brothers was the one uh, you know I thought was the most interesting, with the glass making and the engineering side. Because although they're principally glass makers, they had a big engineering side because they made their own um, machinery for rolling the flat glass. That, you know, they made pattern glass and also the tube drawing, so made tubes and strip lights. So it had a very strong engineering side. The lighthouse works had uh, gone by the time I got there. Yeah, the other thing was that um, they sent me to other, other places to cover uh, aspects of engineering they didn't have, because I did uh, appear a placement at Smelling Drop Forgings, one at Avery's Foundry at Tame Bridge, and another at the Valor Stowe Company for presswork experience. And we also went to the Chance Tech in uh, Smethwick for the, the first sort of I don't know, two or three months for basic machine shop uh, instruction. In terms of your um, your working day, could, could you describe a, a typical working day when you first started as an apprentice? Well, I suppose it was it was in two parts really. If you're in the offices, which started at half past eight, it was very different to being in the works where you started at half past seven because it was quite a commute. I think it was over ten miles, you know, through sort of built up area to get from Kings and Orton to um, to Smithwick. But you know, it was an early start, so I say, particularly in the winter, it was a bit hard going. Particularly if it was two bags, I used to commute on a motorbike. It was. Um, you know, if it was icy, you had to do it on the bus, which meant you had to leave the house about six o'clock or something. What were you most proud of as an apprentice at Chance Brothers? Well, I suppose I've got my, um, you know, the apprentice pieces I made. You know, it was a thing. I think I did that around the Chance Tech, but um, I suppose it was the apprentice sort of tools that I made. And... Uh, I suppose it was coming out of it with the, you know, come out of it with a degree and uh, also the um, whatever you needed to become, um, uh, you know, a member of the Institute of Mechanical Engineers, which was, you know, the thing to look for in those days. I don't think C Eng Chartered Engineer had quite been invented in those days. I think it probably came in, mm. sort of late sixties, early seventies, but that was the thing you wanted, not so much your degree, but to get, uh, you know, membership of the, uh, get membership of an institution which in my case was mechanical engineers, or production engineers and then mechanical engineers. So these tools that you made, could you describe them? Well, they're sort of standard things like there's a V-block and clamp, there's a tap, tap wrench, die stock, and there's a trepanning tool. I think there's some engineers, uh, yeah, a set of engineers clamps. And to the layperson, could you describe what they did? Well, engineers' clamps are like for clamping two bits of stuff together, usually, you know, two bits of metal together. Perhaps you want to hold them together while you drill them or weld them or something. Um, a tap wrench is obviously holding a tap if you're tapping a threaded hole, and a die stock is the, the opposite if you're putting a thread on a, you know, a male thread onto a shaft or stud or something. Uh, what was the other one I said? Oh, V block and clamp, that was it. V block and clamp, yes. Hmm. So, how did it feel towards the, the end of your apprenticeship at Chances? Well, it was at a period of, I seem to remember that there was some redundancy going at that time, and it was rather, I seem to remember, sort of rather uncertain, and I think that they were. You know, when I said I wanted to leave, I think they were quite pleased because they, you know, I got the impression. I seem to remember for some reason I reported to a guy called Dr. Bastic, who I think was head of the laboratory. And um, 
I got the impression he wanted to, you know, he was quite sort of pleased because that was like one less person he'd have to make redundant, you know, the fact that I was going to leave anyway. Did you have another place to go to? Yes, that's why I got this job at Archdale's uh, in Worcester on the numerically controlled machine tool side of things. <laughs>